So I'm rappelling down Mount Vesuvius, and when suddenly I slip and I start to fall, just falling, ah, ah, I'll never forget that terror. When suddenly I realize, holy crap, Hansel, haven't you been smoking peyote for six straight days and couldn't some of this maybe be in your head? And, and it was, I <laughs> totally was fine. I've never even been to Mount Vesuvius. <laughs> that's the first one, right? Yeah, that's the first okay. one. <laughs> so you know it. Curly, you know it, right? Zoolander? Yep. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I like Zoolander. And yeah, I was I forgot what it was, but I saw somebody that like just was like, Zoolander's a dumb movie. I'm like, yeah, it is. And that was that's what makes it great. <laughs> but man. Anyways, welcome to the Utterly Useless Podcast, where we have a lot of useless information for you. So, um, yeah, starting with in front of me. Nope, sorry, I missed you. I only turned to the left. Just kidding. Uh, to the right of me, with, he's the evil clothing designer with a diabolical plan to kill the Prime Minister of Malaysia. Please welcome Brett, Thank embodying you. the one and only Magatu. 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 And he also invented the, p- the piano uh, tie. So good yeah. job, Brett. Good job for that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And then across from me, um, let's see. He's the male model of the cheekbones of, for days and a brain. Well, let's just say he's really, really ridiculously good looking. Please welcome Criddle as Derek Zoolander. You can't tell, but I'm making the blue steel. <laughs> or, or is that uh, <laughs> Magnum? I can't. No, Magnum is. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. He did it, guys. He did it. He pulled it off. And then lastly, I have the effortlessly cool, the perpetual chill, the one and only Hansel. And I do know how to yo-yo so and ride a, a Razor scooter. So, you know. It checks out. Mm -hmm. All right. And let's kick it off. All right, merit badges. What do we got? I'll start off with, so my merit badges badge is I am, I went back to being primary in in primary at church. I'm a primary child. Congratulations. I I gave a talk and I gave a prayer for my, and I was a stand in for my two girls that were just standing right next to me while I give it all. Awesome. They were they were like, yeah, we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. And then, sure enough, they were just like so shy. And I'm like, look out into the audience. The audience is like 10 kids. You're fine. And most of those are in your class. <laughs> but then my son stood up and he was going to say the prayer and he just knocked it out of the park. So All right. He, <laughs> he is brave. Uh, but the funny thing is, is like I was so lazy. I just went and I was like, you know what, ChatGPT, I don't have time to write this little like two minute talk. Can you do it for me? <laughs> <laughs> and, and did ChatGPT nail it out of the park? It too? did, wow. and and you just put the caveat, and it was like, write it as if you were, you know, for like a six year old to read, and it knocked it out of the park. So yeah, I if I had ChatGPT when I was younger, life would be a whole different world right now. Hmm. Yeah, I I bet I find myself using it more nowadays. I use it sadly probably about once a day at least on average. All right. Well, my merit badge this week is I don't remember if I gave this as a pin or if this is a merit badge, but I am for now I'll make it the merit badge, but I'm calling it the double cursed merit badge. Ooh. Ooh. So, before if uh, you remember in a previous podcast, um, I said I was cursed with red lights. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Everywhere we go, everywhere I go, I get red lights, especially when I'm on my own. Uh-huh. I get red lights galore. Well, um, this week, and I've kind of noticed it over the last few weeks, but this week especially, um, not only was I getting red lights, but uh, as, I, as I drive, large trucks tend to get in front of me. <laughs> everywhere I go they just somehow veer in front of me for whatever reason there's an opening or I'm driving and it's what I see seems like it's clear I drive right behind a semi or a really large truck that I can't see in front of mm. 
and they slow me down. And then obviously now there's traffic because there's red lights. And so I can't get around. So therefore I am stuck not only at a red light, but also behind a large truck. Is it one of those like semis that has, you know, 20 different gears and so it takes them like four shifts to actually be at like oh, five yeah. miles an hour <laughs> oh yeah uh, I, <laughs> i'm uh i'm double cursed yeah. oh man well I, I i'm gonna i'm gonna see into the future real soon you're gonna be triple cursed because like it or not utah's second state flower is about ready to bloom and that is the orange construction cones <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true oh yeah we're already seeing it he oh, yeah here and so i mean it's it's gonna be uh oh it's gonna be even crazier yeah, what is with that like I, I swear one week i came to do the podcast and there was it was business as usual and about two weeks ago your drive right there just became something else completely altogether and i'm like I wonder what do you guys know when the ETA for any of that to be done, or is it just going to be like a thorn in your side for a while? Um, I don't, I don't know when it's going to be done. I knew it was going to start, and um, yeah, they're just connecting the corridor um, from the other side of the county to Salt Lake County to Utah County, and yeah, they're just gonna yeah, build that out i don't know when it's gonna be done no idea wow. i haven't looked into it i mean i'm sure i could find out when they are etas because these days i feel like they're very transparent which i like you just go on their website and says this is what it, we're expecting and this is when the next because there's going to be constant construction around here for at least for the next like five years mm. because they're going to be making freeways and all that kind of stuff so yeah well it kind of needs it Yep, it does. I, I want to see a bridge go over the lake. That would be awesome. There's a lot of people that would love to see that. Like, that would really help. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. So, Triple Curse coming soon, yeah. folks. <laughs> All right. So, I don't know what I want to call this. I had uh, one uh, merit badge name for it, but uh, I think I want to call this retro fixing. So... Uh, one of the the great things about uh, education is, especially when you go into an older school, you will have things that predate probably even your beginning of elementary still kicking around in cupboards and stuff like that. And then, of course, obviously, there'll be things that are happened when you were in school. Well... I was sitting there just kind of going through stuff, and we have a collection of Bill Nye VHS tapes. And, you know, I've always been trying to find them either on Disney Plus to, you know, stream or for to teach a principal or whatnot, or buy them on iTunes. And the hard part about that is it's nearly impossible to get all of them because they went out of publication and because of you know they have like those built those song spoofs uh -huh. they're not allowed to re like air them huh so um so the vhs tapes are like strongly strongly needed so the other day i pulled out the one of the vhs tapes that had been sitting in the vcr for probably about a week or so and the instant it refuses to come out, I'm like, crap. <laughs> <laughs> this sucker is stuck in here. And I'm like, what should I do? What should I do? And I'm like, okay, I know what I'm going to do. And so I take my thumb and I force the VCR <laughs> tape up. And it starts popping out, but then it kind of goes back in. Uh -huh. And I'm like, oh, okay. I remember I, this dance. I, 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 know it's gonna, I know what's happening now. And I'm like, what do I do? Do I... Like, cause I, do I kill this VCR tape or do I hope that I can undo this whole thing? And I'm like, you know what? At one point in time, I had a skill, <laughs> a certain set of a skills, a certain set of skills. And I'm like, let's see how rusty my skills are. So I take my thumb, I pu push it up and I rip out this VCR tape and here comes all this black tape. Oh. And... <laughs> 
The kids are looking at me and they're like, what's that? I go, a future project. <laughs> <laughs> and so what was it? the other day I had them doing something because we're doing end of, whenever the kids are done with end of year testing, they deserve like a break. They, they've been working so hard. And so I'm like, okay, hey, I'm just going to have you do this or whatever. And so while I, they're doing that, I am basically perform. I, I have an exacto knife. Because you know, I do have uh -huh. a certain set of skills. I have my exacto knife. I have a thing of tape. I have some scissors, and I have my um, screwdriver. And I am like, and the kids go from doing their fun activity to just it's pure silence, and they're just watching me perform surgery <laughs> on this VHS tape. And you put your head out, scalpel, <laughs> and uh, I, I tape. That would have been awesome. I'd just be like, all right, scalpel. All right, uh, exacto knife. <laughs> all right, all right, uh, tape, yeah. And so I performed surgery on or open VHS cassette tape surgery on these two spools that looked horrible, <laughs> taped them back together. And the kids are like, Do you, th do you think it's going to work? Like, they were like, they like, were intent, they were like, they're eager like, to find out. Yeah, it was just one of those things like, we've never seen this before ever. Like we, some of them knew of VHS tapes existence. Some of them kept on saying, what is that? I go something, don't worry about it. And I put it together and I put it in the VCR and it worked. Oh, wow. Ah, I was Rough. so. Did you give it a fast forward rewind? Kind uh, of? Oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, wow. Yeah. Good job. Look at you. I know. So retro fixing. Add yeah. that to the resume. Uh -huh. <laughs> Open VHS <laughs> surgery. Well, it was funny because I self-taught myself how to do that uh, in the late 90s because we would get these tapes returned to us and we had a service that would like fix them. But the service was super slow and sometimes I think they kept the ones that they're like, uh, this is out of circulation and oh, it was unable to be fixed. Oh, wow. And so I just decided, you know what? These suckers are broken. Let me see if I can like try, yeah. try my hand on it. And so I basically kind of created a system on how to fix these VHS tapes. And <laughs> yeah, I Frankenstein some of them together and I, I still got it. Nice. You still got your groove. I still got my groove. Spin the wheel. All right. We have spin the wheel where we have 10 categories of questions. We're going to spin the wheel, decide who's going to be asking what. And I am first. And I get random question. All right. So this is going to be a, a fun Utah-based random question. Mm -hmm. So Utah has um, started the bracket. Or not bracket. It was going to be, it was teased as a bracket, but now it's just, uh, you get to vote for four mm -hmm. of the potential names for Utah's NHL, NHL team. I'm curious your thoughts. I, I haven't seen any of these, but yep. if there's any Zs, I'm not voting for it. There are zero Zs. Okay. At so the, At the very end? <clears throat> nope, there's no Zs at the end. Well, there's technically two Zs in the middle for Blizzard. That's what I was going to say. There was Blizzard. I yeah. remember Blizzard. So here are, I think there's, I don't know, 20 options here. Okay. Canyons. Utah Canyons. No. No. Utah Glaciers. No. No. I don't like how many weather elements are in the, all of these options. Utah Ice. It'd be one thing if we were like in Alaska, like glacier, uh, you know. No. Juno glaciers would make more sense than Utah glaciers. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, I wish no. we could be like the Utah dragons or something. <laughs> yeah. There's no dragon team. Yeah. Well, there could be dragons under our mountains. Hey, we you don't know, know what? We just kind of unearthed one of those eggs and suddenly, boom, rain of fire. Yep. Right. And all of a sudden, we're then known for Utah dragons. Mm -hmm. That would right be amazing. There. Missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. Utah black diamonds. No. <laughs> Going off the skiing. I know. I know. Utah Mountaineers. I hate these names so much. I don't like the Mountaineers because that's just West Virginia. West yeah, University yeah. of West Virginia. Uh -huh. That's no. their that's their name. Utah Frost. Okay. I don't hate it. Better. Utah Fury. No. Utah Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was like, I don't mind blizzards. It sounds like we're angry all the yeah. time. <laughs> I mean, everybody does say that we're bad drivers. So, you know, the Utah drivers. <laughs> the uh, Fury, Utah Fury reminds me of um, Ben Ball. Stiller's character on Mystery Men. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Where Mr. he just Fury. Yeah, it, what is he, Mr. Fury? I think it is. Yeah. I don't know why. That movie is so fun. And I don't know why I like it so much. I think I have it still. Well, when I think of that, I think of the, um, the. I'm not sure if it's a National Lampoon, but it is a comedy. Uh, I think it's a ping pong comedy called Balls of Fury. Oh, yeah. Yeah. With, I think, Christopher Walken's in uh -huh. it. Uh-huh. He is, yeah. Chris I haven't seen Walken. That, okay, Utah Venom. What? Um, I don't. I'm trying to wonder, where, like, where do we get venom from? Like, venom. Rattlesnakes is the only thing I can think of. Yeah. Okay, Utah Freeze. Okay, I, I, I Frost and Freeze. I'm. I think I'm okay with. Like, I, I don't hate it. I like Frost and Blizzard so far. Utah Caribou. Well, here's the reason why I'm, I'm gonna get to Caribou in a second. Here's the reason why I'm out on the the Blizzard <laughs> because you know they're gonna go the Blizz. Oh, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> <laughs> go, Blizz, go. Uh -huh. Or let's see. What's that one thing you can only do with one syllable? Where they go. Oh, yeah, I guess it's like go jazz or let's go jazz. Uh -huh. But what is that? There's a, I swear there's a clapping one. Because I was thinking, how Every, yeah. I was wondering the other day about how the Celtics would have done it. Let's go, Celtics. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. I guess you could do it in multiple syllables. syllables. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, Utah Caribou. No. No. That's dumb, huh? Utah Outlaws. No. Um, that I'm one... actually for that. I like that more than <laughs> all of them so far. I think we cling, Utahns <laughs> cling on to the fact that, um, what's his name, was born here. Yeah. Uh, what is his Wild name? Wild Bill, or um, not, um, Buffalo Bill. Right? No, not Buffalo Bill. No, uh, something in the Sunshine Kid. Yeah, Sundance Kid, yeah. right? Or not the Sundance. What's his name? What is his name? Something. Right. Butch Cassidy. Butch Cassidy. Yeah, yeah. That's, it. that's it. Um, Utah Powder. No. <laughs> I'm wondering what this <laughs> sigh is, Brett. If it's like maybe, or it's I can just see the entire arena take like baby powder and just like Utah Powder. <laughs> Oh man, talk about a health hazard. And Read no, that no. in. Utah Swarm. I think that one's feeding off of the Utah bees. Yeah. That doesn't make it okay. No, I know it, it doesn't. doesn't make it okay. You know that, that you know they're gonna pre-game like puck, puck drop. It's gonna be like the flight of the bumblebee. Uh -huh. Utah blast. I don't hate it, but I don't like it. So it, during the game, they're going to go pew pew. <laughs> what is blast? Like, is it a, sh yeah, like, pew! is it a shooting blast? Is it like, I don't even know. Hmm. Then the Utah hive. No. The Utah squall. Once again, another weather related one. Utah HC, which is hockey club. Okay, I'm actually fine with Utah hockey club. <laughs> <laughs> Utah Mammoth. You might as well just call this team District 13. <laughs> yeah. Utah, the last one, Utah Yeti. No. I mean, it'd be one thing if it was like Minnesota, but they're the Minnesota Wild. But so if for me, and this is what I voted on. I voted on the outlaws, the blizzards, because somebody I was watching uh, TikTok and they were saying, let's be the Utah blizzards, but our mascot is the Yetis. So that is one option. Okay. Yeah. Or I was just going with straight in Utah Yetis. And I don't think I, I can't remember the other one I did. But yeah. It was definitely not any with the, besides blizzards, is the only weather related one I picked. Yeah, I'll go with Blizzard. I'm going to go with Outlaws. Well, you guys are, those are two of the ones I picked, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying any, I'm not signed with one here. So you're not wrong. So yeah. I, I'm I'm looking at all of the existing NHL teams, and I'm just going to go over some of the newer ones because I'm familiar with some of the classic. Like the Rangers? Cl yeah. So the Vegas Golden Knights. That makes sense. Uh-huh. 
so that makes sense. The Seattle Kraken. I love that. And I'm wearing the hat right now. Uh, and then you have, um, let's see, what are some other new ones? The Carolina Hurricanes. So, again, weather. Yeah, makes sense. The Nashville Predators. <laughs> I feel like that name's... Uh... I mean, <laughs> not the best. One. I, I mean, the worst thing that could have happened is that their mascot had a mustache and a windowless van. <laughs> it's Jared from Subway. <laughs> <laughs> um, then you have then the, the, we're, this is the team we're stealing is the Arizona Coyotes, which never been too fond of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah, that's a that's a meh name. Yeah, I mean those at least are the newer ones. That, oh, Florida Panthers. <laughs> the Florida Panthers should be the Florida Cougars. Why don't the the Jaguars? I mean Panthers, Jacksonville oh, Jaguars. Ja- yeah, and then Carolina Panthers. Mm-hmm. I don't like it when we steal other sports names. Yeah, dragons. Hello, <laughs> the dragons. <laughs> yep. Either that or hey. How about the Utah Unicorns? We could get some alliteration going on there. There you go. All right, Grill, you're up next, and you got What If. What if you could turn your whole life into one animation style for one day? What would it be? Um, Let's see. I do like the idea of The Simpsons. I wonder what I'd look like with four fingers. Do they still fang? <laughs> oh, look, they're doing it again. Um, well, let's see. What else is there? I don't want Family Guy is almost essentially the same thing. I don't know if I want any animated. I mean, animes. But but then you could be like like shout talking the entire time. That's true. I'm feeling like my jaw would be tired. And then like you know, whenever you're getting mad, you know, your jaw would do that, and then the background would go all wild. I I I. And then of course, whenever like you know, you're disciplining your kid. Like you could just like rage and your shirt would just like rip off and you could just go, you know, Super Saiyan or whatever it's called. <laughs> super what? I was think it? it's Super Saiyan or something like that. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I, I learned it from my kids, okay? <laughs> and I don't mean my my son yeah. and daughter. I mean my students. <laughs> I'm going to take a wild guess and that's a Dragon Ball Z reference. Uh, probably. Uh, okay. Um, I'm also thinking of like early 90s cartoons like Rugrats or like Rocco's Modern Life or Ariel Monsters or what is or Doug hmm. or Gummy Bears from Disney. Mm, there's the X-Men. There's the X-Men. There's <laughs> Rick and Morty. Um, oh yeah, no, Rick and Morty. I, I, I hate their eyeballs yeah. and their their lips. <laughs> look like the eyeballs look like they're scribbled on the uh-huh. pupils. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, Simpsons, Futurama. But, thing. okay, well, let's talk about the benefit of it. Like, besides the criteria, I mean, you for anime, you gave good arguments of why anime. Mm-hmm. Those are just, other than that, like, just living in the style. Is there any benefit of one style over another? I mean, if you if you do the, the Scooby-Doo style, you can shove a whole sandwich in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scooby-Doo style, your background, for some reason, really never changes too much. Like, it moves a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, you could be in like you know Ducktales or Tailspin, so you you'd be human animals. There you go. Yeah, that might be something. Is like Bugs cha- Bunny change into that? Mm-hmm. Have you ever thought of why Bugs Bunny is attractive dressed as a woman? <laughs> I don't know how that went, but anyway. Um, my favorite animation of all, and it really disappoints me that they had stopped doing it around 2017, 18 or whatever was the animation that the DC animated universe had it from like the late two thousands all the way to, like I said, about 2018, 19 where everything is chic. Everything is clean. It, it looks good. Uh, kind of like the young justice. If you ever mm-hmm. watched that, but just a tad bit more cleaner, I would go for that. But because of one moment in one movie, I already one have moment. my answer one locked movie. and loaded. That is yarn animation. Because if I <laughs> <laughs> is that a, is that is that ca- is that's a because that's a stop animation. Uh huh. Does that count? That's not a cartoon. You said cartoon. 
Let's count it. Uh, okay. I, okay. I want to throw up yarn. <laughs> I mean, you could. You, you, you could would eat. you cry yarn? Yes. You could, <laughs> how would that work? Would it like get stuck? I guess it would probably cut itself like every single. Yeah. Uh huh. I mean, you could do stop motion animation too. Oh gosh, I hate stop motion. <laughs> I hate it. I, I love that on um, Gunshaker's Guide to the Galaxy when they turn into yarn people. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> do you think if you were yarn, like you would be essentially invincible too? Oh, like yeah. you could jump off of a building and just. I mean, I wouldn't chance it. I would be like. <laughs> well, you start off small first, like yeah. jump off your car, jump off your house, jump off a tree, whatever. You'd work your way up. I mean, I don't think. It, <laughs> but then if you jumped off a building, would you kind of like float down because you're so Maybe. light? You get caught in the wind. <laughs> you're like, oh, Maybe. shoot. I didn't plan this out. <laughs> At least I tied myself to a kite. And then you land in the ocean and the shark, yarn shark, yeah. bites you. <laughs> I mean, keep in mind, it's only for one day. So <laughs> the, just enjoy the, it. The adventures you could have I as know. a yarn person. Exactly. That's why I chose yarn. <laughs> All hail yarn. Well, if he's choosing a stop animation, <laughs> this one's probably lesser known. I'm interested in exploring the idea of, um, what is it called? Is it called like Action League Now? Is that what it's called? There was a show back on Nickelodeon where they had random um, action figures. Oh. Um, as an Action League? I'm not sure about that one, but I do know... Um, that Cartoon Network does it, and it's called uh, Robot Chicken. Oh, yeah, this one's called Action League Now, is okay. what I was thinking of. But Robot Chicken is, I, I know of Robot Chicken, but I just don't know if I know their style. It's just the same exact thing, except oh. it's it's sketches that uh, Seth MacFarlane, not Seth MacFarlane, uh, Seth Green, and a bunch of uh, okay yeah. comedians kind of like do. Huh. Well, I haven't I haven't seen I haven't seen that, so I can't back that up. I'll tell you, it. Robot Chicken, like sometimes it's a miss, but sometimes it's a hit. And it's just like <laughs> I cannot believe that like, you know, this show in the eighties did that and didn't even think of the implications of this. <laughs> what would your guys' thoughts be on um Batman in the nineties? Oh, yeah, totally. Batman the Animated Series. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is like, I think, one of the better animation styles. Especially from the 90s. Mm -hmm. Would you any of you go Pixar? I was just barely considering that. No. I was I also thought of the idea of Jimmy Neutron and that like that 3D animation that's just kind of horrendous, if you ask me. Oh yeah. Yes. Can I go into the world? Because I would choose Fairly Odd Parents. No, I, I, <laughs> the, the, since you said, could I go into the world? I'm like, I know exactly where he's going with that one. Because I would choose the same one. I, I want my own Cosmo. Yeah. Uh, Wanda, it's okay, but Cosmo. Cosmo so dumb. He's so great. All right. Uh, we're just choosing the style here. I'm going to choose Brett's. Just kidding. I'm not going to choose this. Um, Brett's hatred of Archer. Just kidding. It's not. It's just 2D. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what. And that's what. And that's my biggest complaint about the DC animated universe now is they've turned into that kind of animation, and it just annoys me. Um. Like again, I'm just trying to think of. You know what? Regardless, regardless, this is my pick of me going in the world or not. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go with Futurama. Yeah. I guess I want to see if I turn into an alien or if I turn into a Lilo like with one eyeball. I mean, maybe it's, I'm just going to be two eyed, boring Jeremy. Mm -hmm. But this is boring. It, but you know, you'll be a uh, person on Zap's ship. Yeah, oh. <laughs> and, and you'll have to look up and see. <laughs> that has be sadly that has become my tag my gamer tag on some like mobile games is that Brannigan. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's not very commonly used, so I get it almost all the time. Hmm. Uh, but listeners don't take it from me. What about you, Colonel? I was gonna choose Futurama. Oh, look at that. Twinsies. Twinsies. Yeah. All right. Next up is Brett. And Brett, you get Desert Island. All right. 
if you were on a desert island, what would which selection would you choose? Be constantly surrounded by endless supplies of food that you do not like, or be given one plate a day of the food that you absolutely love? Ooh, like what now? D- describe a, a plate to me. What is a plate? Just a standard plate size where it just like has, an American size. Yeah, an American size plate. It's <laughs> it's not gonna overflow with and you know it's not it, gonna be like a buffet <laughs> like that uh, for yeah. Vegas vacation or anything uh, no, like that. It, it's just gonna be a plate, but it's gonna contain all the food that you love. So constantly surrounded by all the food that you hate. An, an endless supply. Uh-huh. Or one plate a day. Of the food that you absolutely love. I want to know how this is delivered to me and when it's delivered to me. <laughs> um, I mean, the, the food that you hate just is there. Yeah. And it's it, just like in boxes and uh-huh. just keeps washing up on shore. Exactly. <laughs> You're like, uh, raisins. <laughs> and, you know, first thing in the morning, because I was thinking about this, I was like, you know, first thing in the morning, you wake up and there is your plate. Oh. <sighs> Right next to you. So it's only in the morning. Uh huh. Only in the morning. Okay. Uh, it does it. Can cha- it change, change to other? Oh foods? yeah, yeah. Okay, but okay. it's it's the food that you love. So if I was like, man, tomorrow I'd really like this, and then that next day would be that. Uh-huh. This is some intense intermittent fasting here. Yeah, it is. Um, jeez, um, this is actually harder than I thought because I was like, if I'm on a desert island, you know, I'll take what I can get. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> Because I'm thinking, like, my worst, Brett knows I don't like olives. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking the olives are going to be constantly washed up on shore. <laughs> Learn to love olives. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> what else don't I like? I mean, there's a lot of foods I don't like, but, like, there's not many foods I will refuse to eat mm-hmm. anymore. Does, does your favorite meal come with a drink? Um, ooh, this could be a deciding factor. <laughs> 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 hmm. <laughs> I'm just saying this is yeah we got to get liquid hmm. somewhere right <laughs> might as well be the best um I mean I could I could if I mean I could get a can of Mountain Dew and let, have it last hours through the day I'm gonna say glass of water oh, oh, because it was food Okay, so we get a glass of water with it in the morning. Otherwise, does it have ice? <laughs> I mean, how, how do you how do you get your glass? Because your, your water from places. Because I know some people put no ice and just all water, and then there's me that will like on purpose do more ice than water because I like to chew the ice. Well, I mean, if 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 a uh... You get to choose the type of ice. <laughs> <laughs> what you want the pebble ice? Pebble yeah. ice. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, maybe one one week you want a cup full of ice that are large chunks or soft or the small little circular mm-hmm. chunks. Uh huh. And just get the round balls while you're at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what my favorite one was? It used to be at the the jazz games all the time. It was these like cylinders with like the little hole inside, and I. Oh yeah, I know always those. enjoyed getting my tongue uh-huh. stuck inside one of those. Yep, and or putting your straw through them. Uh huh. Okay, so so I have a little control, or I have a hundred percent control on my meal. Uh huh. And then you can have a glass of water and your choice of ice. I'm going with that one. You you said you control ice. Yeah. This is still water's lame. Um, I have ways of. <clears throat> never mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So with the other one, Jeremy, you have all of some other things that you don't like and cucklush. Cucklush. <laughs> the one thing I'll say is like, this might be a uh, a little hack, a very tiny hack of getting more water is if you have I- lots of ice in it, that condensation that comes out, that's getting more clean water than the seawater, <clears throat> obviously. So you could lick that. Um, I mean, one week you might want cucumber water. <laughs> he <laughs> just said cu- water. You have cucumbers on your plate. You put it in your oh, cup. Oh, oh, okay. I see. That's there. You go. That's, that's a smart. <laughs> Who wants cucumbers? Cucumber water. <laughs> Veg- <laughs> best, vegetable water. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that is. It's a true name for it. That's vegetable water. I mean, I can get down with the slice of lime or the slice of lemon, but 
Cucumber water. <laughs> you never had cucumber water before? I have. And it was one of those things where I I think it was a couple of years ago, Teach Appreciation, they got us flavored water in the, the faculty room. And I was like one of the last ones. And, you know, there was the hint of cherry, the <laughs> strawberry water, this water. And I got this cucumber water. And yeah, that's exactly what it tastes like. Yep. Like, oh, <laughs> it, it was like... You could do the same thing with grass, just <laughs> from uh-huh. the grass. Oh, it tastes like grass. Again, I mean, you could add things to your drink. Like, oh, I'm go. gonna have add some fresh raspberries and jalapenos and jalapenos and water, huh? Yeah, <laughs> they did that at a conference I was at. Oh, it weird. Uh, well, of course, you see, it's a you food chef conference. people are so <laughs> odd. <laughs> we're we're pretentious. <laughs> uh, this is still harder than I thought because it's either like eat as much as my belly would like and be satisfied throughout the day. And I am one person that regardless of how picky of an eater I was as a kid, I have got to the point where like if it's in front of me, I'll eat it most of the time. I mean, if I have control over how if I have that one plate and I can make it last throughout the whole day, great. But if I have it timed where it's like you have an hour to eat it and then it disappears. Oh, yeah, that would suck. Then I would probably go with the the crappy food. You know what? <clears throat> you got a point there also because if I can control the food, I can in theory control the, the calories and all that stuff. Yeah. Because like if I get a big old fatty hamburger, I could eat that throughout the day. Yep. <laughs> it's probably enough calories to last me the whole day. My belly will have to get used to that, but it'll get used to it. I'm going to do that because I think that would help my sanity just a little bit every day. If I was in a horrible place like a deserted island or whatever um, and had to eat crappy food, I think my mental faculties would just decline. Like Mm -hmm. my 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 morale would just (laughs) die. Yeah. If I were to live longer, I'm picking the the first one. All right. (laughs) What about you, Brett? After yeah, all this? I, I would uh, <laughs> choose that one because, like, there's so many things that disgust me, and I'm like, no, being surrounded by that uh, endless supply of that, or just one plate of anything that I liked. Can I do this? This would be a fun caveat to it. Can I throw the plate into the ocean every day, and then like next day, there's a plane come back? It'd be fun, or do whatever I want with the plate. I could break it. You eat the plate. Yeah, you're the place. <laughs> no, turn it. Come on, do Gilligan's Island. Turn it into a raft. Yeah, there you go. Turn it. Yeah, Ooh, every go. day collect, I, collect. I move it, and then another one comes back, and then I'm slowly am building a raft out of plates. <laughs> it's paper plates. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. That that's when the desert island is like, oh, we're gonna one up you on this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it's not even like the strong ones. The food just goes through it. <laughs> All right, I am up next, and I got, what would you have done? What would you have done if mid-flight you realized you were on a plane with snakes? I would check to see if Samuel Jackson was on board (laughs) first. Because I will tell you, I absolutely love that movie. (laughs) Really? I love snakes on a plane. That is... That is one of my like secret. Well, it's not a secret. Like, I'll watch it from time to time, just for the just because it is so over the top, and just because I mean, there, there's Samuel Jackson's character is so over the top. But my favorite, my absolute favorite character is the extremely gay flight attendant. Who turns out to not be gay at the very end of the? <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> There's a plot twist right there. <laughs> like, whoa! I didn't see that coming. <laughs> um, if I found out that there were snakes on a plane, <laughs> I'd start making hissing sounds. Um, the snakes. Hmm. Slippery snake. I'd probably put my feet up, and that's about it. That's about all I can do. Yeah, I mean, I, I I would sit there and think, I'm so prepared for this. <laughs> I have watched that movie so often. Now, wh- where would be the best place to sit if this was a scenario? Well, I mean, the funny thing about that one is the on the Snakes on a Plane movie, it was one of those like super luxury planes that have like the 
upper deck, lower deck. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, why isn't everybody up on the upper deck? Why is everybody like staying down <laughs> there? I mean, I know that there's a guy that's in witness protection and stuff like that. But it's just like, hey, like, we're, we're, we're being bitten by snakes, you know, by well, the venom, which is possibly the Utah's new hockey team. <laughs> There's the that's how the venom got here. Snakes exactly. on a plane. Snakes on a plane. Um so that's how they do th- did that. But most of them kind of like barred certain areas and then of course they were let loose and they were coming through the ventilation shafts and stuff like that. Would you try to arm yourself with anything? I think what I would do is I would go into the overhead compartments and find clothes and just drape myself in as much clothes as possible, wrap you know, the the blankets around my arms and legs and stuff like that, just so that I I had, you know, bite bite protection. I thought you were gonna end their sentence with, I'm gonna go into the overhead compartment, which I was like, that's not a bad idea if you could fit. Because mm-hmm. then you just close that and be like, I'm going to be here until we land. <laughs> I don't know if you can open it from the inside, yeah. but who cares? I mean, you could also try and... I mean, if I have my luggage, you know, an overhead or below, I just put on as many layers of clothing as I could to try and prevent a bite. Uh, if you were around bigger <laughs> bigger suitcases, you could put yourself into a suitcase. Mm-hmm. Yep, I, same, same kind of thought is what I had. Just cover yourself up. I'd, those... If you had a big old hoodie or something like that, just zip up your hoodie around your head and tuck your feet in. Be like Ron from uh, <laughs> from uh, Dungeons and Daddies, mm-hmm. where he just disappears into his Dis- pants. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Critically, you're up next. You got how much? How much should it cost to go to the movie theater? <clears throat> I have thought about this because we went to the movies on Monday. And even though... I know I don't live in 1997 anymore. I loved, what was it? We would pay about f- about five bucks for a movie. And then a couple of years later when I went to California and then came back or visited in 2003 or four, a mat- daytime matinee at that time, I swear was 1250. And I'm like, that is insane. And so our Monday movie night was nine bucks. I'm like, well, you know what? It's not twelve fifty, and I'm pretty sure the people of California pay a lot more. So I want to. I would like to say seven fifty eight bucks would be a fair price for a movie. And that's for after five, or is that a matinee? I I think it should be all day. Except for like the first viewing, which I loved when me and Jeremy would do that because that, they would always charge a buck less, and so yeah. we'd be paying four fifty for the first showing at nine ten. That seems fair. Yeah, I'm just curious right now. I'm looking up. I know the more expensive one in the neighborhood, Fat Cats. Fat Cats is a movie theater too. Yeah, you yes. didn't know that. No, no, oh. it's not that great. It's all right, yeah. So the one by us is just a bowling alley. N- no, 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 the one by here. Oh, okay. Is is like everything is a bowling alley, a laser. I think they have laser tag, laser tag, and an, an arcade. arcade, and then movie. Hmm. And um, and then the one in Bluffdale, which is not too far. Also, I think all those things as well. Hmm. But yeah, the one by where we used to live was just the bowling alley and Mitchell Ca- Golf. Yeah. I think Mitchell Golf might be in the other ones too. So, um, let me see. I'm just gonna pick a random, random movie just so I can see a price here. But like, and would you keep the seat selection, or do you think it should just be random? I think it should be first come first serve. I, I dislike that I can buy a ticket online, show up ten minutes into the movie. And I have a better seat than the people who possibly just walked in. Like, I, like what was it? Growing up, we would go to you know Southern Utah arches and stuff like that all the time. 
And my dad would just call down. He's like, hey, do you have any, like, you know, um, camping sites? And they're like, yeah, we have five of them. I was like, okay, well, would you, like, hold one for me? And I'll, we'll be down there by this time. And they're like, hey, if you're not there, you know, SOL. And now to even get a campsite, you're at the discretion of you have to book it, like, almost a year in advance. Because people will just mm -hmm. go online and book the campsites. And it's just like, when can you just do something spur of the moment? Well, because of the internet, almost you can't. That's true. It's kind of gone away. Like, I mean, even Black Friday, for example. It's, yeah. Did, there's no waiting in lines anymore. Black Friday was awesome back in the day versus what it is now. Cause, and I feel like the deals were better because mm -hmm. of it. So it looks like Fat Cats is 9.50, matinee, 12, like after 5. Hmm. Um. I, I would like it to, to honestly, like, I think, first of all, I hate this more than anything. It doesn't matter what ticket I'm buying. If it's a it's a basketball ticket, a movie ticket, a concert ticket, I hate processing fees. Oh, yeah. They are the dumbest thing ever. You are saving money by using a website. We all know it. You're not paying some kid to sit out front. Here's your ticket, mister. Yeah. <laughs> And I mean, sure, that was probably cheap. You know, some high school kid is pretty inexpensive as well. Mm -hmm. But still, like, this is dollar twenty-five uh, processing fee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, got to pay the internet. Yep, you got to pay the internet. You got to pay the man. Mm -hmm. um, it's like it's almost like a forced tip. Yeah. Oh, I hate that. I hate that the, too. the default. We, this is what we think you should pay for a tip. It's just like I literally walked up and did everything myself. Mm -hmm. no. what, what do you want a tip for? Yeah, I can go pretty far into how much I hate tipping. <laughs> 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 like there's a time and a place to tip, and there's a time and a place that tipping shouldn't even be asked. Well, what was it? We, me and <laughs> my wife went to Pretty Bird um, a couple weekends ago, and you basically... Order yourself uh -huh. on an iPad. Yep. You do everything, and then it's just like, how much tips do you want to leave? It's like nothing. Yeah, you didn't do anything. Like it, it would be. You just one cook the food, and that's what I'm paying for is the food. Uh huh. <laughs> if you don't include that to the fee, that's your own fault. Um, I'm gonna say I would like a daytime movie like matinee. Yeah. Seven bucks, and I I think I'm still fine with like a normal after five. Movie costing around. Uh, I'm just, I'm thinking somewhere either ten or twelve, hmm. somewhere around there. I think five bucks matinee, eight bucks after. I love I I I love your reality. I want to move there, please. <laughs> I mean, I would love that too, to be honest. Now, but. I I think with matinee with matinee showings, I think there needs to be some kind of like. Uh, just forward message like, okay, just so you know, you when you pay the matinee price, you pay for that experience as well. So you're going there probably with families, uh -huh. probably yeah. with noise, and you know, it's, you, it's a gamble. Uh -huh. it really so is. that's the five dollar fee you pay. Well, and then on top of that, the the tickets are so much more expensive. But now instead of getting like you know your, you know, Coke, buy Coke, get the popcorn from or whatever, like. We experienced this when we went to go see Fall Guy. I was listening to a podcast the other day about the new Planet of the Apes. They have banked in 30 minutes of trailers and advertisements before the movie starts. We got to the movie theater at 535 on Monday. The movie didn't start until after 6. I, the podcast I was listening to, they went to go see the new Planet of the Apes movie and the the guy was like running late. He's like, "Oh man, I'm so sorry. I, I, this is ten minutes late." And the the usher told the guy of the podcast, "Is it's like, don't worry, the movie will not start for twenty more minutes." <laughs> wow! And so they're making money on overpriced food, overpriced tickets, and now I, you know, you have thirty minutes of like I like the trailers. I've always been a huge trailer person. Mm-hmm. Either like when me and Jeremy would watch it and just be like, oh, 
that's going to be a good. You know, put that on the you know reminder list to watch later. Or it's so bad you're just like that movie sucks. Um, I, and oh, good, they did such a good job. I know how that movie ends because they cut that trailer so hor- horribly. Yeah. What but, if, yeah. what if um, to subsidize the price of a ticket, you had to like have a a drink or food purchase it was required. Just thoughts. I mean, like a combo deal. Yeah, like you have to like. So I know, like for example, Wise Guys Comedy Club, they require when you go in, you have to at least purchase one one item. Honestly, like I <clears throat> part of my package deal that I make with my family when we go to the theater is we got to get popcorn, we got to get a drink, and mm-hmm. we got to get a key piece of candy because we don't do it very often. That's part of the experience. Yeah, and so I'm okay with that. Like there was a movie theater in Rexburg. That was that had a cheap theater, or that was a kind of a cheaper theater setting. It was smaller screens, mm-hmm. but they had their their concessions were really cheap. I mean, for a large popcorn, two drink, two large drinks, it was like eight dollars or wow. something like that. So I that, mean, that's very comparable to. There's one called Water Gardens here. Have oh you yeah, ever been yeah. there? There's mm-hmm. is, and their box candy is pretty inexpensive too. It's like, yeah, and they charge the same price as like a. Uh, for box candy as like a Dollar Tree would. Yeah. Which that to me, it, yep. that's fair. Yep, I agree. And that's exactly what they do at Water Garden. So you might want to check that place out. Hmm. Um, yeah. But no, I, I like here. I, so $12 for a ticket, 15 uh, you know, with a drink. So you're just like, that, that's a, instead of like having yeah, to pay eight bucks for uh-huh. a drink. Because let's be real, the cost of the cup and the and the bowl, even for popcorn, and then the cost of popcorn and drink, is going to be less than three dollars, mm-hmm. like for everything. Yeah. Yep, I like that. <clears throat> let's just let's just include that into ticket prices. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I mean, but like, let it be something that's swappable. Like, not everybody likes popcorn. Not everybody drinks soda. You can substitute. So, yeah, like, substitute. oh, instead of a popcorn, I want to get a hot dog or something. Yeah, I don't exactly. Know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. French fries or a slice of pizza. Uh-huh. That is the one thing about nice. I like about fat cats. though, is the food options that they do have there available to you and they'll bring it to your, your chair. Yep. All right. Next and last we have bread up as kiss, Mary kill. All right. So if kiss, Mary kill mm-hmm. the existence of one of these movies. Okay. I'm very curious on which one you would kill. V for Vendetta. Okay. Matrix. The first one. Uh huh. Equilibrium. Okay. Um, which, this one might shock you. Which one I'd kill? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. This one might shock you, but I will kill V for Vendetta. Oh, wow. That's what I was going to pick, too. <laughs> <laughs> I like the movie a lot. It's just rewatchability is not the greatest. <laughs> Equilibrium is much better. Yep, I'm agreeing. I think I might kiss Equilibrium and marry Matrix. Yep, same. See, I'd do the inverse. I, actually, I would probably... I, I've never been a huge Matrix person, so that would be the one that I'd kill. I would marry Equilibrium, and I would kiss... Um, the Matrix? No. V for Vendetta? V for Vendetta. And you kill Matrix? Mm-hmm. See, I just think... I'd shoot it bullet style. (laughs) (laughs) The difference for me is like the Matrix, the one it stands out between the other two completely because it is constant action. It is like high intense action comparison to V for Vendetta, where it's rather slow and methodical and all that stuff. I mean, it's just like the music he plays, it's very, you know, Mm -hmm. consistent. And Equilibrium, once again, great story. But because of the story being that these people have like their their emotions suppressed and all this suppressed, it is once again a little bit dry. Mm-hmm. But I mean that's part of what the story is, and I like the story a lot. But rewatchability goes down the drain with that. Yeah. So my thoughts. Read. Reread it. All right, we got reread it. I feel like it's been a while since I've done this. <clears throat> so. We're just going to go through a Reddit and answer some of life's greatest questions that people have put on Reddit. Essentially, the world's... I feel like this is also the bathroom's um, writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. All right. By 
Regina Justice 52. If you could switch lives with any fi- fictional character for a day, who would it be and why? Hmm. I don't know why when I read this, I immediately thought of uh, Sherlock Holmes, but I'm like, I don't want to switch lives with him. I we would switch lives with like. Would you switch with a rich person? Yeah, I'd do like Tony Stark or something. Yeah. Wire myself fun. some money. Ooh, but then you're also Iron Man on top of it and you get to fly and all this stuff. Well, once I wire some money, then I can go play. <laughs> then you can fly. <laughs> I'm going to bury some gold in some, some place that only I know. I'm at the age where. I I really tend to think financially. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but then you get to play too. <laughs> but then you get to play. Iron Man is a good one though because you get multiple. And Iron Man's benefits. Iron Man's richer than I think Bruce Wayne. So let's go. Is he? I'm just curious. I believe he is. I think I don't know. If I'm memory, if memory serves me right, it's Bruce Wayne, Oliver Queen, then, then Tony, I, then Tony. I think, really? I think. I thought it was Tony first. It could be. I'm asking Chad GBT. I like how he spelled iron money. Iron man. Let's <laughs> see. Chad GBT says. My old nickname in college. <laughs> iron money. <laughs> man, this went on for a while. Ultimately, both characters are incredibly wealthy and have access to vast resources, but determining who has more money would depend on the specific iteration of each character and storyline. Oh, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Just cut the crap and just tell me. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm just going to Google this because I swear this has been a thing. I thought there have been articles about. Yeah, uh, no, I mean, I, I thought I thought it was Tony just because if he's in the he's in the weapons bin, in business and I mean just the things that he does. Whereas okay, acor- okay. according oh. to this, sorry, you're fine. So according to this list, Iron Man's number one. Batman's number two, because he's basically the king. Black Panther's number three. Lex Luthor's number four. I didn't go. know Lex Luthor was that rich. You know, he's he's loaded. I'm only known from Smallville, so that's why. So I literally said, cut the crap. Tell me which one on average has the most. <laughs> and Chad GBT said, on average, Bruce Willis. I mean, Bruce Willis. Bruce Wayne is often depicted as wealthier than Tony Stark. <laughs> so there's, there's a hack for... Chad GBT, just tell it to cut the crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the funny thing is, is but that oh, what you've listed Iron Man first, Iron Man first, then Batman, then Black Panther, and then uh, there there's a lot of uh, subsequent links that are just like, well, it obviously is Black Panther because of the, you know he is the king of Wakanda. Yeah, but that's Wakanda's money. Yeah, not necessarily his money. Mm-hmm. Um, my favorite is like I feel like every once in a while they'll do like a uh, who which fictional character has the most wealth and it I feel I think it's Scrooge McDuck that's always on top because mm-hmm. they figure like what is is it gold that's in his little thing or is it because it can't just be like pennies yeah I mean that'd be silly that would be silly yeah you can't swim in pennies <laughs> nope you can't you can swim in gold you can swim in gold yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. all right by Chur Cherbuda bread. Ciabatta bread? No. Okay. I don't think so. It's almost like they're trying to say churro, churro Buddha bread or something like that. I don't know. But maybe. If aliens landed on Earth tomorrow and asked to speak to only one person to deliver their message, who would be the best person for the job? Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you might want somebody that looks like intimidating, mm-hmm. so, but I mean, he's old though, so yeah. I don't know about that. Okay, Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they got, and they got the Australian accent. Would they fall for that? They'd be Liam like, oh, Hems- Liam Hemsworth. Liam Hemsworth. Yeah. I mean. Oh no, no. I mean Liam Neeson. Liam, Liam Neeson. Neeson. No. Yeah. I got a certain set of skills. <laughs> set of skills. You need someone a little intimidating, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, Chris, I, it, Chris it, it, would be a little bit nicer. Chris Hemsworth with his shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> Pat- with an ocean spray. Do his full Australian accent. We need Patrick Warburton as Kronk. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, uh, what you doing there, aliens? Uh, uh, see, uh, you've uh, invaded. Uh, what's uh, going on with that? <laughs> you like uh, some uh, Jerry Seinfeld? Spin- what's the deal with your alien? <laughs> Would you like some uh, spinach puffs? <laughs> 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 to come out of the oven. 
Tracy Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We're dead. No, the, the earth would be incinerated in a second. I was just like, oh, if you're the, the best person to represent your race. Oh, this is a garbage planet. <laughs> oh, Harrison Ford, maybe? No. As Indy? Or no, as, uh, as, no, they're, as they're as, tired watching him as Indy too. <laughs> as the president, as the president, Zac Efron, Air Force One, Zac Efron. <laughs> ah, his dreamy blue eyes would be like, the aliens would be like, but like, you're a little short. <laughs> can't do anything to this planet. Tom Cruise on the Scientology. <laughs> My help out. <laughs> he, he gets the aliens to join. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, that'd be hilarious! For only thirty thousand dollars, you can you can advance to the next level. Um, then you can have like Morgan Freeman, yeah, uh, Dustin from Stranger Things. <laughs> no, no. Then he b- burst into the Neverending <laughs> Story song. Um, I'm gonna choose in the all best answer. I would like somebody that's a little intimidating, but also friendly. I mean, this is leaning Chris Hemsworth now. Mm-hmm. No, you know, I'm going with our American boy, like the American boy, Chris Evans. Uh-huh. Going with it. I think he will be intimidating, friendly, nice, everything he needs to be, and probably really good at, you know, conversation as well. Channel your Captain America. Exactly. Yeah. And if you feel like it, you know, Human Torch. Yeah. Just just depends on which way the aliens are leaning. Okay. Uh, I guess that we're coming down to which Marvel character do you want to meet the alien? I'm still going to go Liam. You're going Nielsen. Liam. Liam Neeson. Yeah. Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> I thought you were gonna... shirtless. Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> <laughs> if you were going to say, um, oh gosh, because <laughs> you're saying Liam Neeson, I was thinking of uh, you might have been saying Liam. Um, what is his name? Wow. Uh, Naked Gun. Why well, can't think? Of it. Oh, Leslie Nielsen. Leslie, Leslie Nielsen. Nielsen. <laughs> Leslie Nielsen. Yes, not Liam. <laughs> Leslie Nielsen. If he was still alive, that would be <laughs> that'd be great. That would be an interesting thing. Or Norm Macdonald, if you brought him. Back. Oh, Norm Macdonald would be fantastic. I don't think Norm Macdonald would be doing a good job. <laughs> He'd get us dead. Oh gosh. But he'd do it in style. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. All right. Next question: What movie gave you the most most emotional damage? Hmm. Uh, there's a couple that have done some. Um, I think the first one that comes to mind is, well, I don't think it was the movie as much as the book. So I might actually say that it might be the book is um, the movie, the book enough, which is the same as the movie. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, oh no, no! I know one hundred percent what answer this is, and Brett probably would recall this. The movie Hostel did a lot of that damage was to me. Messed up. That, that movie is so messed up. That movie is burned into my head, and I hate it. You know, it took me many, many times of watching Suits to not see yes. Lewis as that a guy. Sadistic sob. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, Lewis Lit, man. That was hard. I was like, oh, you're the guy that uh, took a blowtorch to somebody's eyeballs. Yeah. Um, let's see. Emotional damage. Yeah. I mean, that movie destroyed me. So I'm going with that one. That's. I mean, upon initial hearing, it was the Blair Witch Project because, man, that was awful. <laughs> so that <laughs> took a different kind of emotional damage. Like, oh. But you know what? After, you know, a couple of years of like thinking about it, I was just like, you know what? I know what I know what my basement for a bad movie is. And so if it gets worse than that, I can always just say, man, that was worse than the Blair Witch Project. But in your opinion, isn't Donnie Darko worse than, would you rather watch Blair Witch or Donnie Darko? Oh, no, Darko? no. But like I said, <laughs> I, I, I need, so I, I, I guess you could say the Blair Witch Project for a grading scale would be 59%. Oh, okay. Meaning that it is an F. Oh, okay. Donnie Darko would be about a 37. <laughs> so it is below the Blair okay. Witch Project. It's still an F. It yeah. It just is it, a lower. F. Okay. I see what you're saying there with Blair Witch now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like an F minus minus. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Donnie Darko. <laughs> or that or a lot of M. Night Shyamalan movies. 
Uh, I loved when I saw that trailer for I can't even remember what the, it's the trap the trap and I'm sitting there going that's that's the whole thing he's gonna trap you into watching it. It's funny because I saw that trailer too and I literally thought the exact same thing. So when you said that, I was like, oh my gosh, that's what I thought. <laughs> and I'm like, but the movie kind of looks good. <laughs> it's a he, trap. He's doing it all over again. <laughs> I like mean, he is screwing up with me on a whole different level now with the name. I, I mean, the beauty of the whole thing is just, I feel as though just before I die, like M Knight's just going to come out of the woodwork and just been like, this has been just one. You have been a character in one of my movies. the entire time. Oh, Just you. <laughs> like, uh, Oh wow. This that, explains everything. Shyamalan. <laughs> <laughs> Fall down to your knees, rip your shirt, Shyamalan. <laughs> I mean, I know a lot of people like, like you know what? I, I still think the best movie that he's ever done is The Sixth Sense. and But it's only a one-time watch. And then, you know, you have that Bruce Willis movie that so many people, uh, I do not. I It got good near the end, and, that's, and you're like, what? Well, yeah. now it's over. And then... To me, whenever I, and then I saw it, because it does look kind of good. In fact, the funny thing about it, though, is as I was watching it, I, go, I already knew the twist before they even showed me the twist. For which movie? For Trap. Oh. I, I knew what the twist was before. <laughs> and then I'm like, I, I'm waiting for the actual, like, you know, the, the Shyamalan moment of the whole thing is it's going to be his wife that is the serial killer. And he's covering up for her. <laughs> like that's going to be the whole thing where he's just like, I, I don't mean to be complicit. I just love her so much. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, whenever I think of the village, like that is. <laughs> yeah, the village and the happening. The happening. Oh. And I, I think the happening is where I got off. I was like, no more. I will no longer be Shyamalan anymore. Mm-hmm. And so I have not watched Lady in the Water. That's a messed up movie. That's a weird movie. It's not messed up. By the way, like I laughed hysterically as they're trying to find the everybody's like superpower. Uh-huh. And one of the main characters is like, your superpower is you're always eating cereal. You can decipher secret messages on cereal boxes. <laughs> and the instant that happened, I like, I was just like, I just cracked up laughing so hard. I'm like, I can never take anything he does seriously. However, I do take that back. His best movie is Devil. I never even heard of that movie. It takes movie. place in a, a elevator, and there is no Shyamalan moment. It is actually pretty good. Hmm. So maybe oh, that maybe that trap will be just like that. Yeah. I lied. I did not get off off the after the happening. I I continue watching. I watched um, Split the whole series from uh, mm-hmm. I, what was it? Split, and there's another one yeah. too. I can't think of what it is, but yeah. Yeah. Glass? I didn't watch Glass, but that does is in the same universe. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. What about you, Curdle? What's done the most emotional damage to you? Probably Poltergeist. Oh, really? Yeah. That messed Jaws me up also, for a while. I would say, is another one. Yeah. Jaws messed me up, but Poltergeist messed me up for a while. I need to watch Poltergeist. I like still. Poltergeist. The one that messed me up, though, you know, un- joking aside, was the first Exorcist movie. Oh, I enjoyed that movie. That disturbed me. All right, let's let's move on to our draft. So we're going to be recasting uh, the X-Men 2000 movie, and we're going to be recasting specifically Professor X, Cyclops, Magneto, Wolverine, Jean Grey, and Rogue. And I get to go first. I don't think I even thought about going first and like what that means and what I need to pick first. Um, because I do imagine some people being on your guys' list. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to go on. I'm going to go after who I think. Who I think might be the best of this. I'm going to go straight up. I only have one Wolverine. I'm curious what you guys will have for yours. I don't think it's going to be this guy, but just off the small chance that you guys pick him, I'm going to pick Alan Richson. Oh, that's a good Wolverine. Uh, AKA Jack Reacher. He'd make a better Batman. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, he would make a much better Batman. So, I, yeah. I did not have him on my list anywhere. That's good because he was the one that I was like, so he's obviously not Brett's guy, mm-hmm. but this was like, I could see him as Cyclops and, and Wolverine because I could see him as the Boy Scout, a.k.a. Cyclops, or he's got the big, you know, he could probably be a little bit more menacing as Wolverine. So I'm going with Wolverine because I've got, um, I got a good Cyclops backup. Okay. All right, Krill, you're up. I am not super concerned about most of my picks. So I will just start with Cyclops. Okay. And I'm going to go with Zac Efron. Ooh. Not on my list. <laughs> I I think he would make a good c- yeah. Cyclops. Scott Summers. I also think the, the good thing about him is like, I think he would be, he, he can play like the Boy Scout uh-huh. Cyclops, but also I think he might bring and alleviate a little bit of that because I hate when Cyclops is over the top Boy Scout. Mm-hmm. I like him to be a little bit more fun. And I mean, he we do see that from time to time throughout yep. X-Men. So that's my pick for Cyclops. You know the rest who, I'm not worried. You know who Alan Richardson would be better as Col- uh, Colossus? Oh, yeah. He'd be a better Colossus. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, he would be a good Colossus. Nope, that's a good call. All right. So if you can nail the Russian accent. And I will tell you, I, Zach Efron, this has been my thing for the past two years or whenever James Gunn kind of took over DC or whatever. He would make a better, he'd make an awesome Booster Gold. Okay. I don't even know what Booster Gold is. Booster Gold it comes from the future and he's kind of a superhero, but kind of. Uh, not a fake superhero, but an arrogant, over-the-top superhero okay. at times. I'm curious what your thoughts of him as either a a Robin or a was it Dart? What is his name again? Nightwing. 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 Um, I don't know. Zac Efron is so like it. Most of his movies, he's l- very light in them. I feel as though, like, like what's his face? That have you it, seen him play? Um. The, was his name Ted Bundy? No, I have oh. not. You need to. It's a good movie. I think he, I think I would rather have Zac Efron as uh, Jason Todd's Red Hood. I think he would be make a good... I don't think he'd be good at Nightwing. I think the best Nightwing is actually Robert Pattinson. I think he would be... He's the perfect Nightwing. He's, he's, the, part, he's the Nightwing we need. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'm going to go with my Cyclops. And this guy, he's been in a lot of things lately. He's known for Game of Thrones, which I know that you haven't oh, seen. Oh, shoot. And that is <laughs> Richard Madden. Ah! Uh, <laughs> uh, that was my only backup to Cyclops. <laughs> <laughs> Dang you. <laughs> <laughs> I googled him and I googled like actors that could play Wolverine and he was besides like it gave me you know Hugh Jackman and people and other things that you know have been rumored to be Wolverine in the upcoming Deadpool and Wolverine movie he was the one that was labeled as Wolverine and I'm like he could be but he would actually make a better Cyclops obviously so because I thought the exact same thing and I didn't see that article or anything like that. I just was doing a lot of research and me and Chat GPT were working it out together. And I gotta tell you though, Chat GPT is more missed than hit with its suggestions. Oh yeah. <laughs> I so I always had to say more, more, more. I do that probably about twenty times. And I sometimes still don't get what I want. Oh, that I gotta you may here you're making me tilt here now. I am uh, well, you guys have both picked Cyclops, so I got time to think about this. But you are still up. All right. You're so, so for the wheel now. pick, um, because I I was I was banking off of I haven't seen Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. but I've seen him on um, Bodyguard, Netflix's Bodyguard, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh yeah, that's perfect. Like he's he is the Boy Scout. He's a good guy. Okay, sorry. Go All on. right, so. I have three people for Wolverine. I'm not enamored with 
any of them. I have three people too. And so I'm just going to go with, mm, I'm going to put that because I got two people for Professor X and I'm not sure who I want. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to go with my Magneto. Okay. I'm worried now. Oh. And I don't think you have to, anything to be worried about. I tried to figure this out and I'm like, you know what? Who would make a good Magneto? Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, okay, you can have him. From Walking Dead and uh -huh. Supernatural. Yep. I, as Magneto, I like that because he often plays an... I, like, what do you call that? It's not, it's not an anti-hero. I just see too much Negan in him. Yeah. What do you call the, a person that is... Like, Magneto's character is... Somebody who is occasionally is like, it depends on the scenario that he's a bad guy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I feel like there's not enough of those people written into movies that they're, they're just flat out most of the time, bad guy. Mm -hmm. But uh, he tends to play those people who are walking the line. Like it's situational. If, if you're, you know, you're a human with, with Magneto, he's a bad guy, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I mean, when he plays Negan, Kind of situational as well. I mean, yes, we are watching this through the eyes of um, Rick and his group um, thing. But like, if you looked at it from a different angle, I mean, kind of, he's a bad guy. Don't get me wrong. Like, he does bad things, but like, he also is helping people as well. So almost the exact same thing, I feel like, is Magnum. Hmm. So good call. Good call. Um, all right. Criddle, you're back on. Mm, what should I go with? So you went with your Magneto. Mm -hmm. You have Wolverine, and you did your Cyclops. Cyclops and yeah. I've done my Cyclops. So I am not worried about my Jean. I don't think any of you are going to take it. Take her. Yes, it's a her. Um, we're going to go with. I wasn't super set on my Professor X, but we're just going to go with it. And I'm going to pick Stanley Tucci. As who? Sorry, Stanley? Professor X. X. That's a good one. I don't know why I didn't even think of that. Hmm. I feel like Stanley Tucci's got just, he could be a villain or a good guy. Like, and he can, he can also, if he can do that then he can play right in that middle and be persuasive. I, I don't know. There's there's some element about him that I I don't like as a, Professor Xavier, but I do like him. It's like yeah. I think it's going to come down to him and the director and how well it comes out. Yeah. So I got to pick my director too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess it's me. I'm just spacing uh -huh. here, and I'm still trying to work on my Cyclops. Or <laughs> yes, still reeling. Okay, good thing we're drafting six this time instead of four. It gives me more time because obviously you guys have already drafted your Cyclopses. I am going to... Now, I don't think I have to worry about Criddle picking my Magneto. And I can pivot if I really need to. Although, I have a feeling that you may have one of my people. For Magneto? Uh-huh. I have two people for Magneto, so... I have two people also. Um... If we're ever perfectly twinsies, that would be amazing. So he's picked his Magneto. Uh -huh. Okay, so... It's just me and you yeah. love the Magneto. I, there's a high chance you might pick my Magneto. Um, I'm not worried about anybody perf picking my Professor Xavier. If, if, you're, if your Magneto is along the lines of Ian Mc, McKellen, like that age, then I'm, I'm safe. No. I didn't go for an Ian McKellen lookalike or anything I like that. I didn't either, no. I went for a whole different... If, if, if anything, I tried to cast more similar to what the cartoon would be like. The the, wow. the 97 cartoon. Okay. I, I tried to get... I, I wanted to veer more towards that. Yeah, I didn't I didn't go exactly for that. I went just for my own brand of... Okay. So maybe not. Um, I'm going to go with then... Uh... I'm I'm gonna go with one of the girls, Rogue and Jean Grey. Which one should I go with? I'm gonna go with Rogue, 
And I'm going to go with Jenna Ortega, okay. aka Wednesday. I had her on my. I had her as a second option. No, she's your first option, and I took her from you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then for my wheel, I'm just going to finish out my girls. And so you took my backup for Rogue, Jean Grey. There's two. There's two absolute two that I would. I'm debating between one. Is kind of like she's just barely getting traction in, I feel like, the film world. But maybe not. Maybe she has more stuff, and I just am not aware of her. I will be shocked if you take my Jean Grey. Uh, I don't think I... The only person here I think you could take it would be Brett, but I don't know if he'll take her. Mm. Is she from Cobra Kai? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was last week's sandbox. <laughs> um, oh, gosh. I'm trying to think in my head. Okay, I'm going to go with it. I'm going with Bryce Dallas Howard. Okay. As Jean Grey. Gray. Yep. Yep. Well, I think... How old is Bryce Dallas Howard? That's a good I question. she's about my age, I want to say. 81? Oh. Yep, 81. Yeah, so just... She's uh, four years older than me, so 44, 43. And you still, you still need to pick your Scott Summers. Yeah, and Magneto. So someone around that age gap oh thank you for helping put that together because i think last week i definitely did not <laughs> consider the age things well because like they're supposed to be a kind of a love interest like yeah they're, and they're, alan richens richson I feel an like, item. is he's your age he is yeah he's 85 well yeah. see well, it still works once you get above a certain you know age threshold i feel like age kind of blurs okay um Let's see. And now it's Criddle's turn. My turn. I'm going with my Magneto. Okay. Because it's making me nervous. I'm going with Vigo Mortensen. Okay. Okay. That's a good I, one. I'm just trying to recreate this in my head. I, I mean, want I want Vigo Mortensen with white hair. Yeah. Yeah. I like, mean, like the X Men series. He's got the age that I really want, and he's going to be this. He's the same age as, or close to the same age as Stanley Tucci. I, oh uh, yeah, I guess I didn't think of, well, age doesn't matter too, too much to them, I feel like, it once because they didn't become friends until I don't know when. No, but I mean, they, they, they're they the uh, the pioneers, I guess, of, the, the main pioneers of X-Men. Yeah. So they're like the wise souls. Mm -hmm. I, I like the look of Vigo. I am just curious about. I mean, he's got a channel like a, like a more. Uh, Have you ever seen angry him be a Ara bad guy? Ara more angry Aragorn? Yeah, I agree. It's it's yeah, more angry Aragorn. Yeah, um, but I mean, at the same time, like Magneto's not totally like angry all the time. He's more restrained, but also like he can unleash power. Mm -hmm. He 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 comes off as very arrogant, but also like yeah. skillful. Like he knows he he when he walks into the room, he feels like he's the he's the most powerful mutant. I mean, History of Violence that was a great movie. Um. He he kind of did that. I mean, he was he was a nice guy until the his old mob days came back and found him. I don't yeah. know if you've seen that movie. Have yeah, seen? it's been. Yeah, I like that but, movie though. But I was I was just thinking like, oh, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, like, he he's got their age right there, and I think you know he, he can pull that off. Pulling it off. Um. Okay, Brett, you're up. All right. So. I'm going to go with my Professor X. And I, it was funny because I didn't mean to do this because I have two Professor Xs. Johnny but... Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, if we were going to do that, it would be Magneto would be Johnny Lawrence. And... <laughs> um, but my, my, both of my Professor Xs and Magneto are similar in age, but I didn't realize I did that. I'm going to go with Ralph Fiennes. Why do I know that name? I saw him in my research. Voldemort. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're having him as what, sorry? Professor X. Okay. Yeah, I thought of him. At, it came up as um, an option for Magneto. Mm -hmm. But. See, I thought about him as Magneto, but I'm like, you know what? I could just see him. Sitting in a chair. Sitting in a chair. <laughs> uh-huh. And then for Wolverine, I am. I have three people that. One second. Mm-hmm. Can you help me? I always struggle when I'm always trying to consider him, Ralph. 
it has it spelled and it's pronounced yeah. Fiennes or Fines know. or whatever. I just just yes. Yeah. What is a movie he's done that is not Harry Potter? I he's, always he struggle. On, he was on that movie, The Menu or something. That oh, I know uh, of it. I've never, seen, I've never it. seen it either. But he's on there. Let's see. He was. He plays uh, the voice of Alfred on the Batman movie. It doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know of a movie that I would recognize him and his acting besides as Voldemort. Wasn't, he in, a, a, wasn't he in a James Bond movie? He was in No Time to Die. He was M. He was. He's been the M ever since they kicked out. Um, he was M. M is the 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 gadget maker, right? No, 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 that's Q. Q. Okay, then I forgot who M is. M is so in the Pierce Brosnan M. You had the the, the lady M, the the person in charge oh, of M. MI MI five or MI six. He took her place because she died in in. I can't remember which. Yeah, one, one of them. Yeah. But yeah, he was M and he took, he was basically somebody who was working in there in Skyfall and then he tur- uh, was in M uh, after that. Let's see. I think there's a lot of things that you would not, I mean, he's in the Hurt Locker, but yeah, I, can't I just re- saw that. I can't recall that. him either. And then you have him in. Red Dragon, but mm-hmm. I can't recall him. That is he? I wonder if he's the bad guy in that. They're like, possibly. Man, I have the English Patient. I saw that once, and that was enough. He was in Schindler's List. Man, I don't know a lot of his movies. I mean, I do know like Nanny McPhee, but I don't. Rem- I saw it once. And I don't remember mm-hmm. him. Wrath of Titans. I've seen it once. I don't remember him. He. And I've definitely never seen like the Budapest Hotel. Yeah. And Hail Caesar, I stopped watching that movie because I hated it. Yeah, that <clears throat> one is pretty awful. And I've never seen Doolittle and The uh, Menu. Holmes and Watson. I yeah. went out of my way never to see that. Yeah, I'm just. <laughs> You're in, you know, it's not a bad decision. <laughs> Especially because I see IMDb, it's rated 3.9, which is ridiculously low for an IMDb mm-hmm. rating. Mm-hmm. Especially for like a Will Ferrell movie. Okay. Okay. I don't know his, his outside of Voldemort. That's essentially what I'm saying here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go with him as my professor X and I'm, uh, I'm going to go with this as my Wolverine. The other two I don't think would work, especially one of them would take you completely out of the movie. I think I'm going to go with Taron Edgerton as my Wolverine. Okay. I could see that. I originally had him, but I wanted an older Wolverine. I was just considering him as Cyclops. Oh. So thank you for removing another name from me. You're welcome. <laughs> um, all right. And so now it's back to Cradle. Woohoo. All right. We'll go with my... Well, we'll go with my... We'll go with my Rogue. Okay. I wanted to cast a little younger for the rogue part. And so I'll, <laughs> I'm going with Peyton List. You <laughs> jerk face. <laughs> Who's Peyton List? She plays Tori on Cobra Kai. <laughs> oh, okay. When I said Cobra Kai, I was wondering I was if going you going guys- to pick her because of <laughs> that. But when you said you weren't going to go, you were yeah. not looking at anybody for Cobra Kai, I'm like, oh, she's safe. I can just... <laughs> uh, tricked. <laughs> yeah, when I brought up... Uh, when we were talking about that at the exact moment, I was like, I wonder if anybody's going to consider her for Rogue because I could immediately see no, that. It, you, you dye that uh, a streak yeah. in her hair. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. yeah. That's yep. rogue. That's rogue. Yeah, that's rogue yeah. All right. Now I'm now I'm <laughs> All right. I'm gonna go this is my turn. I'm gonna pick a different direction for Professor Xavier. <clears throat> but I'm just trying to pick which one. I think I'm gonna go with my first initial feeling with this. I don't know how to pronounce his name. It Chiwittle Ejio4. The the guy that plays uh in Doctor Strange? Correct. The the buddy? Yep, the buddy that turns evil at the end. Yeah. Yeah. For who? For Professor Xavier. Professor Xavier. Uh-huh. So yeah, I think I think he could pull it off. Like he's very 
you know, comes across as very uh, well educated. Um, he can sit in a chair, I'm sure, just fine. Like James McAvoy. Yeah. So, so your Professor X would would I know we're recasting for the 2000, but would you change it to the yellow wheelchair, the little yellow floating wheelchair, or would you keep it as the same wheelchair that uh, Patrick Stewart uses? That's a good question. Because I feel like that has a lot to do with your casting. Like, they're going to be sitting in the chair. I don't think I'm going to be doing a yellow chair, but I will do a floating chair. I'm not going to do the one that, <laughs> um, oh, the newer, or I mean, the one that Professor X uses in the, the Doctor 2000s. Strange. No. The, oh, the oh, okay, the other one. Yeah, the Professor X uses in the 2000 ones, like yeah. that clearish one. Because I really wanted to stick closer to the uh, cartoon. The 97. The 97 cartoon. Oops. But yeah, I, I I think he'll pull it off. I have no doubts. The only problem is one thing I did realize is I started I did inadvertently pick a lot of people that have been in other Marvel movies. Yeah, I was trying to prevent that. All at right, least from my side. And this, me too. This kind of this next one is sadly from the same. I came up with these at two different times. But uh, my Magneto, and once again, don't know how to pronounce his name fully, but Mads Mickelson, the guy from Casino Royale with Man, the dripping eye, which is also is, in, Dra- in Stranger in Doctor Strange. He's typecast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as a villain. I mean, he played Hannibal, so yeah. I mean, he he must just he must like the the job. I mean, he played a, the villain, the Grindelwald, Grindelwald, and. Over he took it over for Johnny Depp in the the oh I gave up off though on those the uh, Harry Potter spinoff I'm curious though Fantastic everybody's beasts. drafted a Magneto but I'm curious of what your guys' thoughts are on because I just barely had this come to me after I said this because I always for some reason think I always have to differentiate these two people in my head Mads Mikkelsen from Casino Royale and then the bad guy from um, A Knight's Tale. I don't know if you guys ever see any similarities between the two, but for some hmm. reason I do. Hmm. But what do you think about him as a potential Magneto? Let's but, see. Nothing. A Knight's Tale? Yeah, let me see if I can get his name for you. Um, the bad guy from A Knight's Tale. What is it? It is... Count Rufus Sewell? It is Rufus Sewell, yeah. They look very similar. Yeah. I mean, either one might be able to pull that off. They, mm-hmm. I, this guy looks like a stunt double to <laughs> Mads Mikkelsen. Yeah. Yeah, he's from... He was in The Marvelous Miss Maisel. No right? offense. No offense what? <laughs> to, the, oh, to, to, to the actor. Rufus. <laughs> yeah, let's see. What else was he in that really... I I have an honorable mention for Magneto, and I thought you would pull this guy out of your out of your hat because you've used you've cast him before in other roles. I'm curious. Um okay. And am I, is it no it's not me. It's back to you, Criddle. Back to me. So I have my rogue, I have my so I just need Gene and Wolverine. Correct. Okay. I'm gonna go with my Gene and I'll save my Wolverine for last because you both have picked your Wolverines. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yep. So I'm I think I'm safe. Um I'm gonna go with not do it. <laughs> do it gene mm-hmm. i'm going you, i don't doubt you cast this person um i'm going with connor leslie <sighs> who's connor leslie connor leslie the only person that would know would be him uh-huh. and he's she's played donna troy in she'd titans make, yeah she'd make a good one in what she, sorry she in, plays as donna troy in titans she's in titans? wonder girl hmm. yeah oh she's also the man in the high castle sure Let's see, is this the same kind of yeah, Titans? Okay, Wonder Girl, yep. The man of the high castle, she plays. I think she would be a good Trudy. Jean Grey. And and she's right on the same age gap as Cyclops. And so I think they'd have a, a nice chemistry. Yeah, she's a rel- relatively new ish actor according to her IMDb. So yeah. Okay. I don't know her, but cool. Wonder Girl. Wonder Girl. Like the way she plays Donna Troy is oh, yeah. very Jean esque. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
All right. Then I have my Wolverine. I'll I save. forgot about Titans. Did you say that got better after season one? Or uh, season season two was really good. Okay. Maybe season three up. I've never finished. Oh, okay. that's the Red Hood. Oh, no, no. I've seen season three. I haven't seen finished season four. Season four I haven't finished either. Season three was really good. Mm -hmm. Season two was, was good. Season one was a nice introduction. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, maybe it's one of the shows because I'm definitely trying to look for shows. I feel like I'm, I've caught up to the writer strike and I'm just can't find anything, you know? I'll tell you. <coughs> I think my favorite character before they kill him off is the Jason Todd Robin. I love how, how much he loves being Robin. And... But he also has that insanity, which also propels him to later. He he, <laughs> that, that, my actor drives my wife crazy. Oh yeah, yeah, she doesn't like him. But he, I I told him that's the that's the role of this Robin. Yeah, like and so like that's the whole point. You're just not you're not really supposed to like. You're supposed to be really arrogant. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, he pulls it off. Yeah, I'm he like, does. I'm like you die. Yeah. The instant that he first came on screen when he is. When he comes and sees uh, Dick, Dick Grayson, and I, his presence immediately just like, wow! It was a good casting. It was a good casting. Your mom's a good casting. Thank you. <laughs> um. All right. So who, is it's it yours? You. That's me. Yeah, all right. You, you so got to finish yours off. All right. So I'm gonna go with. I, I feel as though I was reeling from the loss of Peyton List. <laughs> and I think I found it. I think this is kind of very similar to Donna Troy also. This person has been in a Marvel series. And that's Kristen Ritter. She plays Jessica, Jessica Jones. Jones. What's her name again? Sorry, Chris, what? Chris, Kristen Ritter. Kristen Ritter. Okay, I mean, I know what Jenna, what um, Jessica Jones looks like. I just want to, I just want to. Um, the Marvel Sandbox. Mm -hmm. It's it gets vast every year. It gets wider and wider. <laughs> okay. I don't think I've cast anybody from Marvel. I from I've, Marvel movie. I've double dipped. All right, and my last one. I mean, one of my backups is a Marvel movie, I guess. Now I'm curious because I, I I know you guys recommended me a long time ago to watch, to listen to um, the guy who plays uh, Lex Luthor on Smallville. Oh yeah, this inside podcast. of you, Talkville, or yeah, inside he, of you. Uh -huh. Yeah, he, and he interviewed Kristen Ritter. I'm just curious if that was one that you all. I have not listened to that. Okay, one. that was an interesting one. I mean, it definitely had me listening all to the end just because it was fun learning. Mm -hmm. But I just want to see what other Kristen Ritter movies she's been in that I've even her shows. Yeah, I don't know her very well. <laughs> if you haven't watched Jessica Jones or The Defenders, it looks like you don't yeah. really. Oh. I've never heard of The Coldest Case or Orphan Black Echoes. She was in Don't Talk to the Bee in Apartment 23. Oh, that was her? That was her. That was a short-lived show. Yeah. I like that James Vanderbeek played himself. Yeah. I actually really liked that show. I was kind of disappointed. Mm -hmm. But I think now when I've listened to some of the um, um, or, or read some articles about the shows that were in that time frame of 2012, which uh -huh. that was, and that's when Hulu and, and them started taking off. Uh -huh. And they apparently they didn't really account for the um, – the viewing of those when they decided whether it was going to be canceled or not. Cause there was a lot of shows that got unrightfully canceled because it just, the old ways of tracking stats were just not reliable with this new era. What the Marvel stuff on. No, no, Netflix? don't trust the bee. Oh, okay. So okay. like during that time, there was just a lot of shows that were just one to two seasons. Cause they're like, Oh, nobody likes this show. And then like, Oh crap. People did like the show. It was just, we weren't looking at the stats on, uh, mm. on Hulu and all those other streaming device, other streaming platforms. All right. But yeah, that's my long thing about that. All right. And my last one, my Jean gray is, this is an actress. This was suggested by chat GPT as well as Google, as well as just, yeah. 
Lily James. I had her as a backup. I oh, yeah? I did. She was my number one backup. I did see her as um, it was recommended to me via ChatGPT too. How dare you, ChatGPT? Tell mm. somebody else. But I I couldn't. I think I was willing to cast her, mm-hmm. but I didn't know her at all. I just remember her from uh, Baby Driver. And I barely... I remember there was a girl in that movie, and that's all I remember. Was she in Mirror, Mirror? She was in Cinderella. Cinder- oh, Cinderella, okay. And she's in that Pam and Tommy miniseries. As I know I've heard that she's done a famous... I mean, a, a really well... Jo- a really good job, is what I'm trying to say, in that series. But yeah. Lily James as your rogue. All right. Okay. I mean, as your Jean Grey. As my Jean Grey, yeah. All right. Um, Krill, you're up. My last pick is for Wolverine. This one I had the hardest time with. Um, I had three names, um, but I'm going with my first pick, uh, and that is Richard Armitage. Oh, yeah. Who's that? He played... The Sheriff of Nottingham in a BBC series uh, called uh, Robin, Robin Hood. Hood. He also he was... Played, he played Thorin in the Hobbit yes. series. Oh, okay. I remember. Now, is that Sheriff... I mean, is that Robin Hood series? It has been like recommended to me on Netflix it is like, like, really a, good. numerous times. It, it is really good. It, all I'll tell you is it, it's happy-go-lucky... It's kind of I, the best way I could describe it is a more. It's not a CW show, yeah, but which is it's good. it can be lighthearted like a CW show, but it does isn't like zany. So okay. so he's a, on the little older end. I wanted somebody in the Wolverine role that wasn't going to overshadow, but provide a presence and like kind of like a really masculine presence. And I think this guy's got it. Yeah, baby, he's got it. Baby, he's <clears throat> Have got you seen it. Robin Hood? I haven't. Okay, I was just curious. I should though. Huh? I wanted, I wanted multiple opinions if I could get them. That's good. Merlin is good, at least for me. Is I, Merlin like a spinoff? No, it's, uh, it's, it's a really fun series. I think Jude would really like it. Hmm. Um, in fact, it, the neat thing about it is, is. Merlin, it, you you follow Merlin being just kind of like a sorcerer's apprentice. He's friends with King Arthur at the time, Prince Arthur. And it's almost kind of like the dynamic of Lex and Clark from Smallville. Uh-huh. You know, they're leading to something. But it's funny because you know they're leading to it them eventually being friends. Whereas with Smallville, you know they're they're friends and it's going to lead to them being, you know, enemies with one another. But the interesting thing is it's kind of twisted where magic is not loved. Anybody who practices magic is is the devil. Is evil. And so Merlin has is basically trying to save the prince slash future king using magic without using magic. And then then they become like enemies. And you're just like, well, how is this ever going to work out? So I think it's a fun series. Hmm. I will. I did not know it was going to be considered fun. I thought it was just a drama. No, it would it'd be along the lines of uh, Robin Hood. Hmm. All okay. Right. Well, I've been also making you guys talk so I can keep searching because <laughs> I was going to pick Darren Edgerton and then somebody took him. Mm-hmm. So I'm uh, the only one that didn't get someone stolen. I just got somebody stole twice. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Nobody else got anybody stolen. Well, never mind. Yeah. No, Brett got um, yeah. Lori. Yeah, because you... you Peyton. <laughs> yeah, I was misleading. You, you <laughs> baited and switched me. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm not... I'm not hey, yeah, I'm safe. <laughs> Trolled. <laughs> okay. I I can't pick this one person. Um, even though he's better known, I just can't pick him. I wonder if it's the one that I can't pick also. Um <laughs> I am going to pick this one that, yes, I've been like on chat GPT trying to figure out. He seems to fit the character. I am, I've am i seen some of the shows he's been in, but I don't honestly, I can't remember. Henry Cavill. Yeah. Who is that? <laughs> no, it's going to be 
um, this guy named Finn Whitrock. Hmm. So he, he, on? he is on American Horror Story. He's on Unbroken. Oh, when I said the movie Enough, that's what I meant is Unbroken. Okay. I don't know why I thought of Enough. That's a J-Lo movie. Uh, he's on The Big Short and uh, Deep Water, which that's a 5.5 on here. I feel like that movie is at least a six, maybe six and a half. Um, what else is he? Uh, yeah. So you said uh, Jack O'Connell, Finn, oh, Finn, Whit- Finn. Oh, okay, Whitrock, and he, he's on Unbroken. Okay, I guess the, he's in La La Land, the Big Short. Yeah, but yeah. So because I can't pick the one that is glaringly obvious but overused, so I can't pick him. I'd rather pick this guy that's obviously less, lesser known. So, yeah. That is it. So I'm going to re, re... We're going to go over everybody to wrap this up. So mine, Professor X, I have Chiwetel EO4. I don't know. The the black guy from Doctor Strange that's like his sidekick got turns evil at the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cyclops is that Finn Whitrock from Unbroken. Magneto is Mads Mikkelsen from Casino Royale. Wolverine, Alan uh, Richson, a.k.a. Jack Reacher. Jean Grey. Bryce Dallas Howard uh, from Jurassic Park. Rogue is Jenna Ortega from Wednesday. I don't know if this is me, but I always feel like mine's is a hodgepodge a little bit. Bryce Dallas Howard was in an X-Men movie, right? Uh, I don't know. Wasn't she in X Men uh, uh, Dark Phoenix? Nobody was in that movie. Because <laughs> it doesn't exist. It, because I thought Dallas Howard was it, in that. Th- that movie ruined careers. So, well, let's take a look. But because if that's the case, aren't, isn't that the same universe? <laughs> I I don't know. <laughs> I'll let you guys be the deciders of that. But I have no idea of. You think she's in Dark Phoenix, you said? Dark Phoenix. I thought she was an alien in that. I just control F Dark Phoenix and I couldn't find it on her IMDb. So I'm going to say no, Scott. No, I can't find her in on IMDb. Well, maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. Um, I thought she yeah. was in that. I haven't seen Dark Phoenix. So I was told not to and yep. I didn't really just, care. Yeah, continue not to. So that's oh, mine. I, no, that's Jessica Chastain. Never okay. mind. Yeah, I, I get those two mixed up too. My bad. Um, I don't know what your guys' thoughts on mine, but mine I feel I always pick a remorse when I, I'm bad at this recasting. I, I don't feel. know. I think your Finn one for Cyclops might have been a good pick. Like um, I think he's not too big, mm-hmm. but like looking for a breakout. I well, the one thing and the big remorse of Alan Richson as Wolverine is his height. Yeah. That's the one thing I feel like going against him. The tall Wolverine. Because he could have been better as a saber tooth or a colossus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Or Batman. Or Batman. Yeah. Or Batman. Okay, Criddle, you have Professor X is Stan- Stanley Tucci, I'll just say from Hunger Games. Cyclops is Zach Efron. Uh, Magneto, Viggo Mortensen. Wolverine, Richard Armitage. J- I don't know why I was going to say Jean Grey. <laughs> Jean, Jean Grey. Connor Leslie. Uh, from Titans, Wonder Girl, Rogue is Peyton List. List is her last name. I wrote mm-hmm. it down, but I was like, did yep. I mistype yep. that? You're right. It's a weird last name. Uh, from Cobra Kai. Um, I can't put yours together either, like mine. I'm going to see if I can put Pretz together at least. Professor X is Ralph Fiennes from Harry Potter. Cyclops is Richard Madden from uh, Body Card or Game of Thrones. Magneto is Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Walking Dead... From Walking Dead or Supernatural, Wolverine is Taron Edgerton, Blackbird. That was yeah. Did I say that, that mm-hmm. I was going to pick him also potentially as Cyclops, and then you took him as Wolverine, mm-hmm. and I was sad. Uh, Jean Grey is Lily James, and Rogue is Kristen Ritter from Jessica Jones. I I can't <laughs> make these in my head. I don't know if my brain is just not working today. What do you guys think? Who do you think won this? I think. Peyton List would have been a better rogue <laughs> for my team than yours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just worried. So not worried. I'm thinking about Ralph Fiennes mm-hmm. as and Jeffrey Dean Morgan, you know, talking. Mm-hmm. I think like in being friends, I think it could work, especially Jeffrey Dean Morgan. You're Stanley Tucci and, v- and Viggo Mortensen. 
I feel like there's just a little bit of an age difference there. Isn't there like I think they're like a year apart. Really? Yeah. Oh, maybe just Vigo Mortensen's like stuck in my brain brain as what he's always been. <laughs> I considered age. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. I just is Vigo Mortensen like does he act anymore? I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, well, 2023. He's, he's looking for a big role. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you looking for this? We're f- we're filming this. We're going to fund it from GoFundMe. Um, Maybe he'll make an appearance in the Smeagol movie that they're rumored to be making. Oh, that's dumb. Just, just if anything, expand the Lord of the Rings universe and like they've done with Star Wars a little bit, but don't, don't stop. Leave it alone. Mm-hmm. Leave what is there already, you know, as is. It's supposedly being done by Peter Jackson also. Yeah, I mean, that's better, but uh, Cyclops for me is Finn Whitrock and. Jean Grey is Bryce Dallas Howard. I mean, from what the picture looks like, it could potentially work. <laughs> Zach Efron for Cradle. Jean Grey is Connor Leslie from Wonder Girl. I have no idea. I'll wait on you guys for thoughts. I, I think is that's the chemistry a really, there. That, I think that's a really good pairing. I, I feel good about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cyclops for Brett is Richard Madden, and Jean Grey is Lily James. We don't know really Lily James too well. I, I know Lily James, but she was also in Downton Abbey. So. I'm trying to think who who is Richard who? Richard Madden. So he's from The Bodyguard on Netflix and Game of Thrones. Bodyguard is such a It um, really is a really great good movie. movie. I'm looking him up right now. Our great show. Do you ever do you ever see the one the um the one with the phone call? The phone call? The night what the night, night? The, the night watch, yeah. Or something like that. Oh, bodyguard. I haven't finished that. Was Richard I, I, Oh, I, this guy was, I was thinking Eternals. of the Bodyguard. What? The Richard Madden was in the Eternals. Oh, yes. Oh, that's right. That's oh. right. He was. But that movie, when I saw that, when I was doing my research, I was like, I don't remember. I, I remember like two people. You know what? That. Just like Dark Phoenix, nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I, I should have picked Night Watchman, dude. Or whatever it's called. What is it? No, what is it called? The Night. Um, night the, Agent. Night Agent. That's it. Night Agent. I should have picked the Night Agent, dude, as Cyclops. That'd be a good one. Yeah, Gabriel Basso or something like that. Mm-hmm. Shoot, that was a missed opportunity. Okay. All right. Well, I'll mm-hmm. leave it up to our listeners to decide who wins, and we can just move on to our recommendation. Actually, uh, do we want to do... Oh, yes. Let's do an honorable mention. So honorable mention, I'm going to go first. I I kept on trying to force Aaron Taylor Johnson in a role, <laughs> and I couldn't. Who is that? He is Quicksilver. He's Quicksilver. Oh, I did come across him. I, I, I Chat GPT him. recommended him in a yep. couple. Of, I was like, I can't. I cannot do that. He's he's too like he is uh-huh. in fantastic shape. But he's just too lanky. Yes, that was my thoughts too. Exactly for every role. Um, I, just, I just don't get that guy. I just don't get him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, he's fantastic <laughs> in. Um, Bolt Fall train. guy and Bolt Train and Bolt Train, yeah. In, okay, those rules like those rules I get. What was the first thing you said before Bolt Train? Fall guy, Fall guy. I didn't oh, okay. didn't really care for him in Godzilla. As far as quick being a Quicksilver, it wasn't I wasn't a big fan of his Quicksilver. Quicksilver done right was what's his face from American Horror Evan Story. Pe- oh, yeah. Evan Peters. Yeah. Um, my other this one I came up on the internet as a possible Wolverine. And I think it would just distract everybody. I think he might be the height for Wolverine. But the instant he'd come on screen, he'd be like, I just... And that is Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. 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 He's I, he's, I, he's jacked enough for it. but I, uh-huh. I don't think his... I don't know if this sounds rude or what, but his face. Too yeah. boyish? I don't know. Yeah, and he's not rough enough of a face to be animalistic, I feel like. Mm, that's fair. Where I feel like... That's why one of the reasons I picked Alan Richardson is I feel like his face could do it and his body, but his height was crap for this. And then my other honorable mention for Professor X, which I kind of was going between Ralph Fiennes and this guy, is Gary Oldman. Okay. That would be fun. It's just I think Gary Oldman's getting too old, unfortunately. Yeah. Which is sad. All right, my... Are you done with your yep. honors? Mm-hmm. My honorable mention for Professor Xavier. I think Brett, you'd only know this guy, David Oyelowo. Oh yeah, from 
Silo mm-hmm. as the sheriff. Um, let's see. Magneto, I had Ozer, Oscar Isaac as a potential backup. Jean Grey. Oscar Isaac. Yeah, I know. He's going to be Oh, there. yeah. I, I, you know, my, my running joke was going to be is... He's going to be everything? Well, who has Oscar Isaac and who has Pedro Pascal? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I thought of Pedro Pascal, but I just like immediately brushed him off. Um, this one, because have either of you seen Fallout yet? Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Oh, okay. The blonde girl uh, with the eye patch as Jean Grey. I was hoping that she'd go so evil in Fallout. Oh like, yeah. Yeah, Annabelle Annabelle O'Hagan. And then I thought the one, uh, which also I didn't realize that she. Oh no, the, uh, another person I had on my list, and I completely forgot about till now. I think I skipped over it as we were talking and I was picking Mary Elizabeth Winstead from Scott Pilgrim. Oh yeah. That would have been a good Jean Grey. I should have maybe gone that way. Um, And then I thought the one that was so obvious, glaringly obvious for Jean Grey uh, in, in today's day would be Elizabeth Olsen, but obviously she's already taken for Scarlet Witch. Wait, you're, who is your, your, uh, Bryce Dallas, Bryce Dallas. I think that Weinstead would have been better. Yeah. I mean, with, yeah, I think I agree. I, I like when I just need to space these out better on my notes because apparently I, I just walked. That would have been a really good pick. Mm-hmm. And then Rogue, I had backup as Haley Steinfeld. Mm. Okay. Or Steinfeld, Steinfeld, yeah. Man, the, the Marvel box. Yep. I think I, okay. So my honorable mentions, uh, my backup. My one and only backup for Professor X was Hugh Laurie. Um, well, who is that? I know that name. House. House. Oh, yeah. Chad GPT recommended that to me. And I was like, I've never watched House. I don't know. The only time I've seen that guy in a movie is, what is it called? It's It takes place in the Sahara des- Desert. I think it is called like Rise of the Phoenix or something. Oh, yeah. Or- yeah, that's a good movie. Rise of the Phoenix. Yeah. Um, backups for or Zach Efron with Cyclops would have been Dylan O'Brien. Who's that? Oh yeah, he he was in uh, he was my pick for um, who was he? Was he my Spider Man last week or was he yeah. my Harry Osborn? Anyway, yeah, he he was your pick, one of your picks last week. And then uh, I also had Henry Golding as a Cyclops. Um, backup for Magneto, which I thought you might take, was Christopher Waltz. I, I definitely saw him. I definitely considered him, but I didn't want him. Um, I thought, and then for my backups for Wolverine, I thought this was two on the ball, and I didn't want to dip into the Marvel again. But Tom Hardy, and then as who Wolverine. I thought of him as Wolverine too, but I didn't want to dip into and, that. Yeah, and then I also had Wes Bentley as a backup as well. Who's Wes Bentley? Wes Bentley plays in the Hunger Games. He, as what he plays the guy with like that crazy, uh, stylish uh, beard. So he's one he's, of in the, the t- he's like in the control room. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, um, that's a good one. And then backups for Jean Grey was Lily James and Ana de Armas. And then my backup for Rogue was Jenna Ortega. Oh, oh yeah, that you did mention that. All right. Now let's move on to recommendations. All right. Uh, my recommendation so far, uh, I was hoping to have something else in the meantime before I threw out this recommendation because I would rather have tested it, tried, it, tried and true before I threw it out there to, to the audience, to our useless scouts. But um, there's an app called Likewise. And I like that it... it I wish it would integrate with uh, IMDb to pull out your ratings from there. And then for like, likewise for <laughs> likewise for books, I wish it would pull from like Goodreads or whatever mm-hmm. like that, because essentially it's just, it's trying to create a community of recommendations and like figuring out engines of what to watch and what to read, what to listen to on podcasts and all that. And it is very much like a, like a dating app because you can swipe, um, like I I swipe the TV shows and movies and it shows the trailer like immediately as soon as you swipe to it. So like it leads to less really, um, you know, having to uh, 
like to do more research because everything is right there. It's immediately playing and you don't have to be platform form specific. In fact, you can tell it which platforms you do have. And so that also helps with narrowing things down. So I know it's in the early stages, but I'm already enjoying it. So I will recommend it. Awesome. All right. Uh, I don't really have a a recommendation this week other than to listen to the Utterly Useless podcast. Like, comment, subscribe, and give us ratings. And tell your friends. And tell your friends. Come on, and tell don't. your friends' friends. Tell your roommates. Tell your uh, significant tell, others. Tell that person on the street. Tell you... your dog. Um, you know. Oh, yes. Dog, we are number one choice of audio for dogs. Yep. It's, I, I don't get it. We're but. still working on the cats. Um, but uh, Cats hate everything. They're jerks. Yeah, I know. We're still working, but... You know, listen and let us know what you think. All right. So I'm going to tell you that um, this year's Bullet Train nominee winner (laughs) will be the fall guy. I think that there will be a couple of hit and misses, but I will tell you it's going to... It might not hit every single genre like Bullet Train did for the Normie Award, but I will tell you, it's going to be in the high running for a lot of them. (laughs) And it is a joy. I I will tell you, I am super excited for that to come out on Blu-ray. And I'm very eagerly anticipating the the director's commentary on that because he, the director of fall guy was and they do this at the very beginning of the movie they tell the audience that he was a stuntman before he became a director Mm -hmm. and so i am so curious like stories that might he might be talking about revolving around the movie why he did certain things or whatnot and then of course they have so many easter eggs like you'd have to like watch it multiple times to probably catch a lot of the Easter eggs. It is a fun movie. It might not be the best movie of 2024, but I'm going to give it the bullet train nominee for the normies right now in mid-May. Our our first nomination. That's a bold move, Cotton. I know, it is. Hey, you found your director for your X-Men movie. Exactly. There you go. And then um, one of the... The, the, this is just kind of put a feeler out possibly for the future. There's a movie that's coming out in July. It looks pretty funny. It, everybody who's ever heard of the conspiracy revolving around um, the moon landing and whatnot, they have a um, a comedic take on that, I guess, possible conspiracy about a marketing firm basically casting uh, astronauts to fake and stage the moon landing it stars scarlett johansson and channing tatum and i i saw the trailer for it when we went to go see fall guy to me that is one of those that like yep that is definitely on the list (laughs) (laughs) i like the idea Mm -hmm. (laughs) i will definitely need to watch that i need to definitely watch fall guy though i'm gonna watch that trailer today and you know at FYI, now on uh, Apple TV, yes, you too can be watching Argyle and get back to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I think there's some things on Apple TV uh, it's worth, once again, like getting a month or two worth yeah. of subscription. It's, oh, I hate, oh. It's so, <laughs> <laughs> it is so kind of good, and then it just becomes what it becomes. <laughs> What you need to do is you need to watch that and then you need to watch the pitch meeting. You don't don't do it in inverse because <laughs> it will give away so many like holes within Argyle. But it's one of those things where like some I, I even found some that the guy on the pitch meeting missed. And I'm just like train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we'll see ya. 